Welcome to a new breed of golf live. Michael Breed here, excited to be inside the Morgan Franklin Transformation Center and helping you improve your game and your understanding of a golf swing. Once again, before we do any of this, I got to tell you about some cool stuff here. The blessed poker chip ball marker. You love it. You know about it. All you need to do is send an email to us at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com and you too can get any choice of, of Five poker chip ball markers. They're six bucks. They're fantastic. Now, let me tell you something else we got here. We just got them in. Our let's do this putter covers. I want to tell you about these putter covers. This is for the mallet. We got them in lefty and righty in the mallet. But what's cool about this is there's a magnet in this right here that sticks right to your club head just like this. So you don't have to worry about losing your putter cover anymore. This thing just sticks right to the to a club if you're if you're coming off the the uh, green and you're headed over there, this thing, it'll stick right there. When I go and play, I take my putter cover off. I put it to the to the club on the bag. I go hit my putts. I do whatever. I grab it right off the bag just like that. Make sure you get, if you're interested, we got them in varying colors. So all you got to do, if you have an interest, just send an email to me at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use that putter cover here in just a second. Before I get to all that stuff, though, I want to introduce you to a couple of people. You know them. You love them. Steve Gibbs, and also to Greg Ducharme, those two gentlemen right there. And, oh, he <laughs> threw a curveball. I was expecting the fist pump, and he went behind the back. You know what? They got a, they got a pitch clock nowadays in baseball. You never know what you're going to see around these parts. All right. Now, I want to talk to you about one of the most important things that you can do, understanding what's going on with the trail hip. Before we get to that, though, you have to understand that – the body can get locked down. And what I mean by that is in posture, and I was down in DC for Morgan Franklin the past, uh, well, Tuesday and Wednesday. And I, I just was given a bunch of lessons to a bunch of people. And the number of people that set up to the golf ball improperly was, I mean, it was way above 75%. Literally every, what, three in every four, that's kind of the math on that. Three in every four people set up poorly. And they don't understand how to put the body into the right position at address to move freely. So I don't want you to get up off of the sofa or wherever you are not at, at office. I mean, at your work, this isn't going to be good. So stay in your seat at your office. But here's what I want you to show you. Give me a down the line shot if you would, Gibbsy. If I stand straight up like this, where I have no bends in the body, I can rotate my body very freely. That's, that's what we do all the time. You're sitting there, you're talking to somebody over here and they go, Hey, Michael. And you go, Hey, Jeff, what do you want to talk about? And you blah, blah, blah. And you, you don't even step. You go like this. If I bend over as much as I can, and then I try to turn my hips, I can't. You, you lock yourself by bending. So the more you bend, the less rotation you're going to be able to get. Now, that is both a good and a bad thing because what I want is I want to create a limitation to the amount that I'm going to turn, but I don't want to create so much limitation that I don't get the golf club back. And the number of you that I have seen set up to the, to this club with the toe in the air, bending over a lot, taking the club back like this and not being able to take it any farther than this and swinging down. What you do is you prevent club head speed. What you create is inconsistent ball strike, which creates inconsistent ball speed. So the combination of poor club head speed and poor strike gives us really short shots or very low ball speed. And what we want to do is we want to be able to increase club head speed and increase ball speed by, by getting a better strike in the, in the club face. Okay. So how do we know how to set up properly? Well, I'm sure you were wondering what this thing was doing back here. So this is just a very simple thing that I've, I've come up with. This uh, PVC pipe here, I'm going to say it's a little bit more than, than five feet tall, right? So we're here. And when I stand up, I'm going to put this club down. When I stand up right here, you don't need to go split screen there, Gibbsy. Yeah, there you go. Just keep it there. Now, I pretty much have this going right to the to, to my ear. So this is in my ear, okay? And what you can see, if I take my arms out, is that it's, it's going more or less 
through the edge of my pocket or through the middle of my, my body standing this way. So kind of in my shoulder, through the pocket, right to the ear, just on the edge of the ear. Now, when I get into a good postured position, I'm not worried about my arms and my hands right now, just a good postured position. Here's what you're gonna see. As I bend, I want you to look at the knees, the space that happens between this PVC pipe and my knees. So I bend like this, and there really isn't much of a change, is there? The knees, they move out, I mean, a fraction, but I'm not talking about the entire knee flex on this side of that post or this PVC pipe. So if I go like this, watch what happens to the space between the back of my rear and this PVC pipe. If I go like this, all it does is drop down and I don't get any closer to the ground with my chest. It's just, it's just an elevator going down like this. I don't want that. What I want is I want to feel like I'm bending this way. Now, when I bend this way, I haven't put any knee flex in here. I have way too much upper body bend. That's why you can see this pipe now or this post going way back on the, on the, on the trail side of that Titleist logo. What I want to do is I want to get a little bit of bend and a little bit of bend. And now all of a sudden when I do that, you can see that my entire pelvis is on the back side of my post. My knees haven't really increased any space out that way. And I've had a little bit of upper body tilt this way. But for the most part, this is in the back part of my, of my shoulder, on the back side of my shoulder. So I go here, and then I come down right to there. Now, if I take this out of the way, now there's my posture. Now I'm feel, I feel so stable, okay? So now, better move this. What you have to do is you have to practice this. And what you can do is you just, where this camera is, you're gonna put a mirror. So you get to a mirror and you can take a piece of tape and just run it down the mirror. You might even get a, uh, a gear tie, maybe even have a, a piece of PVC pipe if you want. But what you want to do is you want to get in here and you want to feel like this is this, your rear is going back. This is going down and out. And there you are. And what you should see is the back of this right on the edge of that. There it is. Just like that. And now you have space. Now you have freedom to move your body. So I get in here like this. I get my posture. And now I'm going to go bend, drop, bend, drop here. And now I get the strike that, I, that I'm looking for. I don't know if that's frozen there, Greg, or not. Um, something's going on, but I'm not seeing any of the, uh, the lights come up. There you go. Let's see. Let's see if this happens again. So here we go. We go bend, drop. And now what I feel is I feel the weight in my feet, right in my arches. I'm not out here on my toes. Okay. Let me bring this back again and show you. If I take this thing. And I do what many of you do, which is here. And then you go, boom, like this. Now, all of a sudden, that post is going straight up through my hip here. But look at how far out over my skis I am. And all of a sudden, I feel like my feet are digging in like I had talons. And they're digging in. And I cannot swing from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide. I'm going to lift. Like if you're a slider and a lifter you probably are way out on your toes at a dress. I would say 95% of you. If you're a slider and a drifter, your toes are, are, are heavy with weight. That's because you're tilting over this way, almost like you're getting ready to, to, to jump that way, okay? So what you want to pay attention to is 
getting your body into a balanced position where you feel that weight in the arches there, okay? And then from there, now you can move. And so I moved pretty nicely on this one. How did I do? Come on. Come on. Yeah. I love when that happens. All right. Now that's just freedom. And by the way, that ball speed was 119 miles an hour. I mean, that's, that's, that's moving for a six iron. That's moving. Okay. But it moves because my body can move. So that's an important thing that you, that you need to, that you need to um, kind of understand. You, you, you can move if you can't move without making some sort of motion before you go a rocking back to the heels a lifting up a sliding this way if you have a difficult time getting in motion it's because you're not at the in the right position at address and so again this whole thing is going to be make sure that you're here you're letting your your uh, rear go back as you kind of drop down add a little knee flex and then you're done and feel that weight distribution uh in the in the arches there the other thing i'll tell you is this I want you to experiment with what bad is and then experiment with what good is so that you can identify the difference between the two. Because what happens to many of you is, is that you think you understand what the good is, but you don't really know the difference. And as a result, you kind of fall into what's comfortable and comfortable puts you in that bad position again. So what I would like to do back in that down the line thing is, let's say I was a, a person who's set up with too much um, knee flex and not enough waist bend. So this would be too much knee flex, not enough waist bend, toe of the club in the air. I'm sitting back like this. It, it, it literally looks like I can get knocked over on the heels. So I go bad and then I go good. Then I go bad and then I go good. And I feel bad and I feel good. And then when I get to, okay, this feels good. My weight feels like it's in the proper position, then paste it. And what you're going to do is that one, there's 122 miles an hour of, of ball speed. So that's going over my target because I have the freedom to move. And what I want you to understand is, is that whatever we talk about with this hip thing that we're going to discuss and whatever questions that you ask, you have to remember that if you're not in the right position at address, you're not going to move correctly through the motion. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you about the hips and specifically the trail hip so what i have is i have a piece of pvc pipe which you would expect and i have a gear tie now this gear tie this has got to be a four foot gear tie i'm going to wrap this around like a belt okay put this here and then i'm gonna wrap this gear tie like this now, if you're just crazy enough like I am, what you do is you take this and you twist it and it'll tighten it up, okay? So you make sure you have it as tight as you can be. It's not gonna be absolute, it's not like a belt tight, but it'll stay on there. Now, what you wanna do when you make a golf swing is you want your hips to rotate just like this. I don't want them to rotate 90 degrees. I want them to rotate about 45 degrees. That's what I'm trying to get out of them. But what I also want is I want this trail hip to lead the way. For people who have a difficult time making a full shoulder turn, the more hip turn you add, the more shoulder turn you're going to be allowed. If I stand here with my hips and I lock them down and I rotate my shoulders here, I can't, you can't see that trail shoulder disappear. My hips are facing you. The trail shoulder is about as far back as it can go. And I would say that's probably a 40 degree angle. I don't even know if it's to 45 yet. But if I get here and I let this hip go like this, now I add my turn and now all of a sudden I have a full turn. So if you're one of those, those individuals that is struggling making a full turn, chances are you're not making a full lower body turn or trail hip turn. And as a result, the upper body doesn't get its complete motion, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go to an overhead camera. And I'm gonna show you. So this is gonna be, this is me making a turn of the upper body without, uh, I, I turned them, hold on. I don't want to turn those hips. So here, 
That's as much as I've got. That's as much turn as I've got. Now, if I turn my hips like this, look at how much. Now, that's an over-rotation of the hips. Now, all I need to do is do that with my shoulders, and all of a sudden, I'm at 90 degrees. You can see that. It's perfect, okay? So now, when I put a club in my hands and I record this, Now watch what happens. I'm going to tell you how to do this, but watch what happens to my shoulder turn when I get my hip turn. So I'm in here like this, my good posture, and now I go. Okay? Now, check out the turn that's created here. So here's here are my hips. They're at about, they're four degrees closed right now. Okay. I'm going to take the club back. This is me making my massive turn. That's about 60 degrees of turn. Look at how much shoulder turn I got there. Man, that's, that's at least 90. So there's the PVC pipe right there. Now let me get this going down and at impact so there my sh my hips are are at 15 degrees open there and they started four degrees closed so i had 20 degrees of what in effect is rotation from the initial address position okay that's kind of what took place now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this again work on this without taping this, without recording this. So I'm going to get out of this. And one of the things that I would recommend that you do is practice with this and then just take your phone. You can get a V1 app. You put the phone either in front of you or behind you and then just watch how much rotation you're getting out of that, out of the, the hip girdle, the pelvis there. So here, good posture, let it rotate. And one of the things that, that I like to try to do with my students when uh, we're working on rotating the, the lower body is it's, it's pretty simple to do. So what I try to do is I try to take this end of the pipe, which is the lead end of the pipe, and I want to rotate the trail hip so that the lead end of the pipe gets over the golf ball. So I'm going to go there. Okay, what many of you do is you do this, you slide. And if you look at this uh, end of the pipe, in fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take this head cover. I'm going to put this thing on this like this. Now, that makes sense. Now, I go like this, and I rotate it like that. It's such a simple thing to do. And it's so important for you to be able to get proper rotation. And look at how when I turn my trail hip, how my shoulders turn. It, it's, it's actually automatic. I'm never going to turn my hips and not turn my shoulders. That isn't going to happen. It feels awkward and you can't get any rotation. You got to let that trail hip go and then your shoulders are just going to go. This was a very, very, very popular thought with like a, a Bobby Jones, um, you'll, you'll even see. You know who's doing it right now is, is uh, Jordan Speed. This is an idea that, that he and Cameron McCormick had done a while ago. And coming up this week on uh, Course Record, we're going to talk about this. The show, when is the show airing uh, uh, this week? Sunday uh, at, I believe, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock on Sunday. So 2 o'clock on Sunday on CBS, we're going to talk about what Jordan is doing with, with his turn, what, what he and, and Cam have been working on. And they're, by the way, he's having a great year. They're, they are really making some, some great strides, and it's fun to see. But the point is this. What you want to feel is this thing moving away from its starting point. So its starting point, which is right here. So I'll hold that up there. Go ahead back to that shot you just had there, Gibbsy. Yeah. So you see the starting point. When I go like this, see how it moves away from that starting point? So here, 
move away from the starting point. Now there's a whole lot of space between this end and here. So now we get in here like this, rotate that hip back, boom. And there's a very, very clean strike. Neither, another nice ball speed, very straight shot. Okay, and it's, it's so simple. Now, let me record this again with the head cover on there. And now you're gonna get an idea of how that works. So it's, and there's no lateral move, movement whatsoever. So we're in here like this. And now we just go boom, boom. Now come on over here. Now watch this. You over here with me, Gibbsy? Yep. Okay, watch. So here we go. That's the edge of the, the head cover. That's actually a little bit tight. The edge of the head cover is right about on that mat right there. So here we go. Oh, I'm still getting ready. Okay, time for another one. That's about there. Now watch the hip. Okay, now if I go up from here to about there, that's how much the hip has moved forward. It's moved this way forward. It's moved back as well, but it's moved forward. So that hip has moved from here over to there. That's a lot of movement. And now you can barely see that PVC pipe right there. So if I go from this PVC pipe down to there, that is about a 60 degree turn with the hips. Now I'm overdoing this quite a bit just to make a point because normally I'm, I'm only going to get about 45 degrees out of my, out of my hip turn. And with a six iron, it'll be probably a little bit less, but in an effort to try to show you how to do this, I'll exaggerate this a little bit. And then what you're going to see from here is the downswing part of this. And when we get back into the strike, so we're right there at strike. And now all of a sudden, my hips are about 20 degrees open to the target. Shoulders are about seven degrees open to the target. So not quite the same, okay? All right. So what you do, simply this. You're gonna get a gear tie. Get a piece of PVC pipe, it's about three feet long. You wrap it around that way. You teach yourself how to move those hips properly. If you happen to get one of our head covers, great, put it on the end. If not, put something on the end so that you know what that thing is doing. It'll weight it a little bit more, you'll feel it. When you get in to hit your shot, you're still imagining that you've got that PVC pipe on your, uh, on your hip line. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just focus on getting this trail hip to not just go back, but it goes forward, it's going that way. So we make sure that it's going that way. So we get in here like this, I'm gonna steam this one. So here, oh, it didn't pick it up. We missed it. All right, let's try it again. I gotta give, I gotta, you know, I gotta give the guys a chance to reorganize. There we go, okay, so here we go. We're good, okay, we're good. So now I'm just gonna feel that thing go that way. Steamroller. And now I get the steamroller. Come on up, bring four up to the, bring four up to the corner there, Gibbsy. Thank you, sir. 123.6 ball speed. And that's hips. Now, I don't do that with my swing because I don't, it, it will create a draw. But the fun part is if you're slicing the ball and you wanna get rid of your slice, this will give you a draw. Gregory, you think you put a trace on that one for me? So what you're gonna find out is, is that as your hips start to get more active, the club's gonna get a little bit deeper. It's gonna come a little bit more from the inside and you're gonna hit some draws. Go ahead and show that one. There you go. You can see that right there. See how, how that ball starts out and then it turns over to the left-hand side. Now. It's a great way to add, add to add club head speed, to add ball speed, and certainly add distance. And so you have to practice it. One of the other things that I like to do with that is I'll take, I'll take my PVC pipe when I'm wearing this, 
So I put it on like this and I'll go up against a door or a wall. I put the head cover on there so it doesn't scratch it. And I want to prevent me from sliding, right? If I have a wall there, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to run into the wall. So you start with it on the wall right there. And then all you're going to do is you're going to turn it. It goes down the wall a little bit and then off by the rotation of the hip. So down the wall and then off. You can do that with a golf club. The golf club will make a mark that, that the, um, the butt end of the club, that, that color at the butt end of the club will, will wear on. Believe me, I know this because I've done this. It'll wear onto the wall or the door. So I tend not to do that with this. I tend to do it that way. But you can still do it if you want. If you don't care, it's no big deal. Put that up against that wall and spin that away. I don't want you to lean like this. I want you to turn it. And when you turn it away, you'll load the trail heel. You'll rotate the body properly. You'll add a little bit of depth with your hands. So when the club goes to the, to the top, your hands are back in here instead of over here. They're over here. That's going to allow the club to come from the inside with a ton more club head speed. So this is one of what I think one of the most important things that you can do. Now, finally, how we bring the club down. Everybody's okay. You got it in the back. So okay, great. Now we got to bring it down. All right. Can you think about the trail hips? Yeah, you can. You still can. In fact, I recommend it. It's a really good idea. So now you get yourself dressed again. It's not for Halloween. Put this thing on like this. Spin it up. Now, what you do here is, is you just start from square. And all I want you to do is slap this with that. You're not going to get to your hand. But you slap that that way. With this hip, not the lead hip, the trail hip, slap that that way. Because you're going to push. So you go boom. And then you get to a point where you can really do it fast. You go boom. So you go boom. So we go back and they go, Whoa. so you get used to that. And I'm telling you, you get even more speed. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get more than 124 on this one because a lot depends on the strike. But you know me, I'm bashful. All right, here we go. So you go back like this. This, is, this hip is going to rotate and then you're going to go, you're going to make sure that you fire that thing into that ball. So here we go. I'm not going to do this hard this time. I'm just going to do this properly. So here and there. And as you start to do this, you're going to really feel what we talked about earlier was sequence. Because one of the things that allows you to create more club head speed and more ball speed is by using the ground to move up. If you go down to the ground in the downswing, you're going to be really grounded. You're going to be slow. When you go ground up, that's when you start to take flight. That's when you really start to gain some speed. And so what I want you to do is I want you to understand the sequence is going to start from right here. And the sequence goes trail heel, boom. And when that trail heel starts to fire in a rotational fashion, now chests move, arms move, clubs move in that order. So I was working with somebody down in D.C. We call this an A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D, that's what I want. This individual was going C, arms, D, hands, B, chest, A, legs. So C, D, B, A, no speed. A, B, C, D, speed. A, trail hip. So here we go. Here we go, trail hip. Uh, didn't get it again. We're having a little bit of a malfunction. I don't think that was, I don't think that was our fault. I think that just happened. We good? Okay. Let's try it again. And then I'm going to get to your questions. So here we go. So to the top, we're good rotated. And now we go a trail hip, start that downswing and then I let everything go. Here we go. Okay, now come on up to the front. Wow, this is my fastest speed ever with a six iron. Honestly, 128.2, 128 miles an hour with a, I don't play at that speed. I'm playing now at about 119 to 120. When I get it to get to like 122 to 124, that's when I'm trying to really get after it. This one here, and I haven't done, I have not, 
thought about lower body mechanics in a long, long time in my swing. It's, it just hasn't been something that I thought that I needed to work on, but evidently I'm leaving some speed out there because that one was fast. This six iron flew 200 yards. Now it had a little bit more draw than I wanted to have. In fact, I don't like the ball to draw, but it's still very, very fast. And that is for you. That's waiting for you when you start to understand how to use the lower body to assist you. So what you're going to think about again, and this is something you could do on the golf course. Set up, you take your club like this, make sure that this grip moves back like that, and then you're going to slap that, that what would be an imaginary T where the ball is. You're going to slap it with that trail hip. You get used to that. I don't know if I can get 128 again, but we're going to try. So same thing. So practice that like that, trail hip moving up there, and then you go. So that was good, not quite as fast as the one that I hit before, but still very good. 125 miles an hour of, of ball speed, that ball carried to about 195. 195 with a six iron, that is literally about 15 yards farther than I'm accustomed to hitting my six iron. And I will tell you, three years ago, I was a, I was a 175 guy with a six iron. Same loss, same make, same everything. It's a T100 Titleist, same everything. One at uh, 195, and I'm playing now at 180, which is good for me. But that 195, that's exceptional for me. Didn't have as much hook on that as as uh, the one before it. So again, three miles an hour less ball speed. But boy, that's a lot. 125, that's good. So what I want you to do is I want you to understand how you can move the trail hip both back and through to create more club head speed. Requires rotation, requires some practice, a PVC pipe, the putter cover is optional. I would tell you though that I can, I tell you, I, I you know, Greg and I, we default to the gear ties. I, I was doing the radio show uh, down in DC. I have a, a, a lav mic and I said, what should I do with this? And Greg goes, let's get a gear tie. I'm like, yeah, let's get a gear tie. It's surely going to work. So gear ties, get them. They're great for you. Fabulous instructional devices. And they slip into your bag so easily. You can make them do whatever. It's like silly putty. Make them do whatever they, uh, whatever you want them to do. Very, very um, uh, successful training aid in whatever it is that you're trying to train. I use them for paths. I use them for, for planes. I use them for all kinds of different things. And you can obviously see I use them as a belt as well. Okay. All right, Greg, let's get to some questions here. Okay. This one's from MJ. Uh, I, I want to know when we start the downswing, what should be, uh, what should we feel initially? Uh, the push of the trail hip pull from the lead hip. How do you decide between the two? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing because I don't necessarily believe that you can, um, I don't think you need to have only one thought. I think you have to have more than one thought to create the same thing. Th there are times where this trail hip is going to work out beautifully and you're going to do it a lot. And you may say, you know what? I need to feel like my trail knee is going to fire to my lead knee. Well, if I fire my trail knee to my lead knee, my hip has to move. This trail hip is going to have to move. If I take my lead uh, hip and I move it back out of the way, is the trail hip going to go with the speed that I want it to go? I think some, some of it has to do with dexterity. I think some of it has to do with training. So I think you need to train all these different thoughts, lead hip, trail hip, whatever. But what I do know is this, if I move my trail hip this way, my lead hip will go back. It, ne it won't necessarily go for, go, go, um, I got to say that differently. My, my lead hip will go straight back that way. It won't turn. Like if I take this and I turn here, so I put this over here, the grip is going to go back, but it's also going to go behind me. So it's going to start working away from the target. See that right there? So it's going to go back towards the screen and it's going to keep going. And now it works back away from the target. Whereas if I take my trail hip and I move that up this way, my lead hip will actually move forward. It does move back and away when it's rotating, but it doesn't start in the same spot. So my lead hip is starting right here. When I move it, my trail hip forward, it actually, my lead hip is right where it started. And so what will happen is when I move this, my lead hip is just going back. It's not going towards the screen and away from the target. And so in order for you to be able to get that lead hip to work properly, you got to move it back. And that will help drag the, 
the uh, trail hip up. So I think there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. What I find is, is that most people that are right-handed golfers are right-handed individuals. And so let's use the right side of the body and see if the right side of the body can't work. And it, you may find it in a hip. You may find it in a thigh. You may find it in a knee, all moving up to that forward position there. Okay. Don't be afraid to have varying thoughts to get the same action. Go ahead. Okay. This one from Robin. Uh, I'm afraid it's like my mother used to say, I'm a, I'm a double negative. She taught school for 42 years uh, and I'm over the top and a slider with limited flexibility. Uh, where should I start? So you're an over the top slider, which means to me that you're not getting back enough. Over the top sliders are people who go like, they slide back like this, so they've created no rotation, and then they stay back there on their trail side and they come over the top and they fall back. And I would say it differently. I would say you're a slider over the top, not an over the top slider. Most people who are sliding forward aren't over the toppers. They don't hit it very solidly, but they're not over the top. They're not coming in out over here. Okay, so what I would say to you is, is that you got to get some rotation in the backswing. Now, you can't tell me you can't do it. You just, you got to tell me I haven't done it. And so what you can do to, to give yourself a better chance is simply narrow up your stance. If I get wide stances, I can lock hips. If I get narrow stances, I free up hips. So if you get in here and you just play with a little bit of a narrower stance, now you'll get a little bit more turn and you'll be able to, to work the club correctly through the shot and you aren't going to slide. You'll just rotate your body properly. So what I would tell you is you got to think about the slide away first before you can solve these issues that are happening in the downswing and the way you're going to get out of the slide and into the rotation. If it's a limitation of what it is, then you just narrow up your stance so that those hips are freed up to, to rotate. Okay. All right. Okay, this one from Jay Nim. Uh, I always get confused with the sequence. If I think about the hips too much, sometimes I feel like the club is way behind me coming into the hit. Okay, so this is a, always an interesting one because when we strike a golf ball, I want my body, you know what? Let's do this this way. Let's do this this way. Oh, no, I got it down the line. My fault. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Efforting. Efforting. Okay. Now, let me hit this, okay? So this is my address position right here. Hips, knees, shoulders, feet, they're all facing, facing you right there. Now, now I hit it. Okay, so now let's go up here. So you can see the body rotating, pulling the club down nicely into the strike, which is right there. So let's set the impact. I'll trim this. This is how, this is how easy this V1 stuff is, by the way. Now, this is what a dress looks like. And that's what impact looks like. Address, impact. Address, impact. Address, impact. Pretty different. Address, my head's up here. Impact, my head's down here. Address, club shaft is here. Impact, club shaft is here. Address, Trail hip is here. Impact, trail hip is there. Impact and address look nothing alike. Now, so let's just go with Jay instead of Jay Nim. So Jay, if you're going to get to where your body is more open, which we know it is, and you're going to be having forward movement and rotational movement and, and shaft lean and dropping in the head and all these other things, right? That handle of the golf club, let me show you something that'll be really interesting to you. So the handle of the golf club is right about here at its height and at impact, 
It's actually right about there. It drops down about one to two inches. The, the height of the handle, depending upon the club itself, the handle will lean. And as the handle leans, it lowers. So why is that all important for, for you? Because what I want is I want this. Well, if I look at where the head of the golf club is relative to my body, it's behind it, right? Like the head of the golf club right now is here. My trail shoulder is here. So if I drive, go down from my trail shoulder straight down to where the golf, the head of the golf club is, and then I look at where my handle is. So my hands are here. So my hands are center of the chest is right about here. So the hands are probably behind the center of my, my chest at a dress. The hands are kind of in the center of my chest. So what I want is I want to feel like the club is behind me. Now, this is important. If the club is behind me here, that's great. However, give me a down the line, Gibbers, please. If I have the club behind me and it's trapped, in other words, it gets trapped because my elbow, my trail elbow is way back here and the club is over here. And now I get into here. Now I'm going to dump out early and my path is going to be too far out to the push side. And that means that you're sliding, not rotating. Because if I rotate from here, now all of this is going to be out over here. Club behind me, hands still behind me. They're on the right side of the body. And now they get to the left side of the body or the lead side of the body. So what you want to feel is you want to feel like your hands are behind you. You want to feel like the club head is behind you. You don't want it too far behind you, but you do want to feel like it's behind you. I want to feel like at strike, the head of the golf club is on this side of my shoulders, not on this side of my shoulders. If I come in and I put the club on this side of my shoulders, I'm going to flip it. If I feel like it's on the trail side of the shoulders, now I'm going to trap it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have taken loft off. And now what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a very, very low launch, a lot of ball speed, a lot of club head speed. So come on over here. And again, I'm just yapping. I'm yapping and swinging 118 miles an hour of, of ball speed. I didn't even make a good full turn. 118 miles an hour ball speed, but I trapped it out 15 degree launch angle. Normally like I'm a 17, maybe 18, 177, 178. So what I want is I want the club to be behind me. It's just this way is where the orientation of my body is, right? If my body is open, the club head should be behind me, right? Because if I'm here, now I go over here like this, that club head is behind me. That club head's on the right side of me. If I take this and I rotate, that looks like a pretty good, maybe a pretty good strike position. So I get in here, I take the club back. I want it to be behind me. You put the club behind you and then keep it behind you. And that's where you're going to move the low point forward. That's where you're going to trap the ball out. That's where you're going to get consistent strike. That's where you're going to get center face strike. Don't be afraid to get it behind you. Be afraid to get it underneath. If it's underneath, now we got a problem. Because I want it behind, but I don't want it behind and underneath. I want it behind and on top. And when I get that, then I get a good strike. Gregory? This may be very similar. You may have answered this in part already, but it's interesting from Mickey. If your hips are rotating fast, but causing the club to get stuck behind you like Tiger had in the past, should you work on slowing the hips, speeding up the upper body, or staying connected? Um, okay. It's uh, speeding up the upper body, maybe. Um, the other thing is two no's. No, no. What I do is I want to I want to orientate my shoulders differently. So when my shoulders come in, if they come in and the lead shoulder goes up, that's when I'm going to dump it and get stuck. So I can have the same speed, but at this point, what I want is I want the lead shoulder to stay down. When the lead shoulder stays down, the trail shoulder stays high. When the trail shoulder stays high, the hands and clubs stay high. And when the hands and clubs stay high, now the club comes down and it, it's it's unimpeded running into the, the golf ball, right? So 
what it will look like in that downline view is when I go like this, it almost looks like it's over the top. It's not, but it looks that way and it feels that way, but you need it to feel that way because you're stuck. When you're stuck, you're under. That's what happens to Rory. Rory gets under. And when, so if we come in here, when Rory starts to go this way, now all of a sudden the club starts to work underneath and now it's a push shot unless he recovers it with his hands. So what I like to do here, feel that shoulder going down. And now I can still use the lower body. I'm just going to let the, the upper body work on top of it. And all of a sudden, my golf ball will start to the left-hand side. It won't start to the push side. Okay? And so when, when that starts to happen, uh, did, did, you, you got a little one. You were just giving them a little shot. That was a good idea, givers. Just keep them on their toes. I like the way you're thinking. But anyway, so the point is, is that this lead shoulder doesn't have to move faster. It has to move differently. It has to move down. Sometimes it starts moving up too much. And when it moves up too much, you kind of seesaw the shoulders. And when you seesaw or drop the trail shoulder, that's when the club gets behind you. And that's when you start to run into some problems. It's not about the speed. It's about the orientation of the shoulders as they're working through the strike. Okay. All right. Okay. From Nathan, uh, I'm pulling the ball because I start the club too steep from the top of the swing. What's a good move to flatten the club at the start of the downswing? Okay, this is great. So let me let me make sure I take this off so Gibbsy doesn't get confused again. So here's what we're gonna <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do the opposite. So you're over the top. Well, when you're over the top, the lead shoulder is tipping down. So how do we get out of being over the top? We drive the shoulder into the top, right? So if I'm over the top. I'm running away from, let's just call this the top, right? So top my shoulder here. If I'm over the top, I'm running away from the top. If I want to get out of that, I want to drive the shoulder up to the top. So what I do is I take the lead shoulder and I work it up in the air. And you'll see when I work it up in the air, my head's going to work away from the target. So I go here and then I go up. And all of a sudden, what I get is I get a ball that pushes out to the right, very high apex. That had a 111-foot apex, and it starts out to the right side. That started out. Come on up to the, to the numbers here, Gibbsy. And what you can see is, is that things changed quite a bit on that one. So it started out to the right four degrees. Well, I'm pulling everything. Well, that's not a pull. That's a push. It spun to the left. There's a little bit of a draw. Ball speed pretty good. The, the apex, 111 feet. But here's the big telltale sign of all of it. This last number right here, the launch, 22 degrees. When I start to go like this, the club levels out and it's moving along the ground instead of into the ground. That'll get you out of the pull. So now, Gibbsy, pull, uh, pull the sim full. And what you can see is the trace of the shot. So the trace of that shot, it starts out to the push side and then it turns back to the target just exactly what we would what we would want to do. Now, let me show you what would be the difference, okay? So the difference would be, I get in here, now I take my lead shoulder and I drive it down. So I'm going to drive this down, just like this. So I drive it down. Now, come on up here and look at what happens to these numbers. First of all, my collision becomes a lot worse because I'm driving it down into the ground. So my ball speed goes down, my distance goes down, but also too, look at the vertical launch. It comes down from 22 to 17. Look at the apex, down from 111 to 78. So everything came down. So as this lead shoulder goes down, shots are going to come down. As you start to let this go up, Shots are going to go up. And then the other thing that you'll notice is this horizontal launch was about two degrees to the left. That ball spun about 377 RPMs to the right. So I had a little brush cut there. Didn't have the distance, didn't have the apex, didn't have all the things that we wanted in that, but we got a difference. So if I'm trying to curve shots, I just think about what I'm doing with that lead shoulder, drive it down for a cut, drive it up for a draw, and that'll take care of that issue that you've got. Okay. 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 This one from John. Uh, will putting an alignment rod in the belt loops work like the PVC pipe? It can. Here's the problem. When you put the, the, it can. Okay. And I've done this. I've done a lot of things. I've, I, it's not like I just woke up and went, aha, PVC pipe. I've put them into belt loops and you know what happens? Pants get destroyed and people forget they lose their way. And all of a sudden belt loops get like, if you break a belt loop and it snaps, you're out of pair of pants. 
That PVC pipe is probably, I don't know, two bucks, maybe three, right? The gear tie is probably three bucks. So I'm six bucks in. You mess up a pair of pants, you're out like, I hope you've got nice slacks, nice pants, say like 50 to $80. You're out that. I don't know how many with 50 to $80, how many pieces of PVC pipe you could buy, but you don't, I'm just gonna say this. You won't own Home Depot, but you'll be well on your way. Okay, you got plenty of money to get all the, the BBC pipe that you're going to need. If you damage, you can do it. I just wouldn't. If you, you end up invariably end up ripping your pants. Go ahead. Can a gear tie fix a belt loop? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. <laughs> gear tie can fix a lot of things. I don't think it can fix a belt loop, but you could use a gear tie to wrap it Board around it. your. Yeah, it replaces the belt. You just have to adjust your belt a lot. That's the only problem with that. All right. This one's from Darlene. Okay. When I fired the hips first, I seem to start pulling up and hitting thin shots. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. So what you're doing is you're firing your hips laterally. So Darlene, what you're doing is you're getting here and then you're firing them this way. And what happens when you fire them this way is you drop down. The upper body drops down because you fire them. The upper body doesn't move with. So you fire them this way laterally not rot rotationally and all of a sudden they go in like this and that lead hip starts to go up that's why you do that what you got to do is you got to get them to rotate this way very very simple thing to do and i'll use this right now because i've got it you're going to need it down the line if you would jibbers let's do it this way so what i'll do is i'll have a a wall in this case this is just one of my pvc pipes and what i do is i set this up so that it's on that piece of my my body and when i rotate i'm going to feel like i'm going to take to take my lead hip and i'm going to hit that thing just like that and then in a face on uh gibbers what i'm going to do is i'm going to set this up like this and when i rotate i don't want to rotate and hit it so that's my slide i don't want to do that what i want to do is i'm going to get here like this and then i want to rotate this way so rotate like that and feel what that feels like Okay, so that feels like that rotational maneuver. So now what I'm going to do is when I get in here, I'm going to just feel that, that left hip just rotating like crazy back that way. And now that's all the rotation that I've got. This one is a really good one. Come on, get in that bucket. Yabba dabba do. So all I did there was I just spun that that way and the club bottomed out exactly where I wanted to. The shot went exactly the way I want. That ball didn't, that ball went literally dead straight. Show that trace on that. It, it didn't have, it started a little bit off of center, but it never moved off of that. So pretty straight shot. And so all you got to do is just get yourself one of those, again, PVC pipe. You can do that with a wall too. Hard to swing through the wall, but you can do that with a wall. When I do this and I will do this, I, I just use a piece of PVC, PVC pipe that's only about that tall so that I can Swing right through with a golf club. Not a hard thing to do, okay? A little bit more more difficult when you got a, a five and a half foot uh, piece of PVC pipe, so, okay? All right, this one from right. Thomas. Thomas? Uh, which happens first, the hip turn or dropping the club into position? Oh, the hip turn. There's no question. Um, in fact, if you look at many elite level swings, the backswing is still continuing the backswing while the downswing is starting. So this happens many times. The club goes back and this is the, the, the arms of club are still going this way. So the hips start to unwind when the club is, is kind of continuing to go on the backswing like that. And it, you could you just jump on YouTube and look at any of these swings. The lower body work, the rotation of the lower body is happening way before the dropping of the golf club. And in fact, the rotation, uh, depending upon how you do it, can assist with keeping the handle high, but letting the head drop down. We call it lay down. So this club, when you start to do this properly, it will lay down like this. So the head of the club will get from the inside, but the handle of the golf club will be out and over. Okay. So there it's not, it's that one there. That's, that's, that's a separator. Like we, when you get to a point where you can start your lower body's uh, downswing before you finish the backswing, that's when you really start creating a lot of um, what, what Jim McClain would call uh, X factor, um, the separation between the hips and the, the upper body because the chest is still going to rotate. And now this is, this is going this way while the shoulders are still kind of closed or closing. And all of a sudden, a, 40, a 45 degree differential between the hips and the shoulders is going to stretch out to 
50, 51, something like that. And that's when uh, we see a lot of ball speed, particularly if the, the, the strike is in the center of the club face. Okay. All right, Gregory. All right. This one, a little uh, shift of gears here from Justin. Hey, I love the show. Any Thank tips you. for the pitch shot from 30 to 80 yards, uh, technique and club choice and things like that. Okay. So, so here's what I would say, Justin. Um, a pitch shot to me is no longer 80 yards. I would say a pitch shot, depending upon the individuals, a pitch shot is going to pretty much stop at about 50. So maybe it was 30 to 50 yards that you were trying to say at 80 yards. Sometimes that's a full pitching wedge for some, for me, that is nearly a full 58 degree wedge, not quite, but nearly it's like a three quarters way past a pitch shot. So pitch shots to me are 30 to 50. So if we're going to do a, a, a little 30 to 50 yard pitch shot, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to hit it with my chest. That's the thing where people I think struggle the most is they don't hit it with their chest. They hit it with their arms and their hands and they think, well, I'm making a small swing. I'm going to, I'm going to just not need my body. And all of a sudden your arms and your hands are coming in here and you're stabbing it in the ground. You're hitting it fat and thin. You're doing all kinds of different things that are not productive. What I want you to do is I want you to feel like you're going to hit it with your chest. So your chest takes it back and your chest rotates through that shot. There is going to go. What about that goes 30 yards, 30 yard shot. So there you go. And so what, what you're doing is you're using your chest to control uh, the arms and the hands. Now, this let's go with the A, B, C, D, right? A legs, B chest, C arms, and D uh, uh, club head or hands. So as we go through here, I'm going to start A. So lower body is going to move. Club is going to follow with the chest. And the same thing is true. Same thing again. And so what I get is, you're going to see, I get another consistent shot. That one there, another 30 yards and almost identical. And all I'm doing is I'm just letting my chest hit the shot. I'm not doing it with my arms and my hands. If I want to hit it a little farther, I'm going to turn a little bit more, but turn a little bit more. And all of a sudden this one's going to go, I don't know, 40, maybe 45 yards. I can't tell you 40 yards. And so all I'm doing is I'm just letting the amount my chest moves and the speed with which I move my chest at to produce the distance, but it's still the same. And if I had no club and I had no hands, that my pitch shot would look like this. It would go, that's my pitch shot. And so all I do is I think about this and this, right? So my lower body is moving, but I'm thinking chest. So I go chest, chest. That one there's a little bit farther than that. That might be 45 yards. Let's see if we get 43 yards. So all I'm doing is chest, letting my arms and hands, letting the club follow the movement of this. And then, of course, the lower body is, is in sync with what the upper body is doing. Okay? Okay. All right. From Nathan, uh, how do I stop the club from coming across the line at the top of the swing? Uh, we did a, a show on this, Nathan. Um, what was it, last week? I think it was last week where we had a gear tie we put it on the wrist but oh, we did that last week yeah. yeah and so the way you the way you do that is you get a gear tie you create this thing i'll show you how to do it in fact you know what i know exactly where it is run the music cue the music gibby let me uh let me jump out of the studio and get this uh this gear tie did you cue the music i thought you were gonna start singing at least give him some singing okay so here's here's the gear tie give me a, a three zoom in here on the three so what we've done with this, just get right in there. Yeah, there you go. So what I've done with this gear tie is I, I, I created a little heart at the top. I wrapped it around a couple different times. And what I do is I put my hand in here. It's like a bracelet. And then I wrap that like this. And then, now that's pretty tight. Now, I got my gear tie. I open it up like that. Okay, so now, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get closer. Yeah. So now, what you can see is how that gear tie sits with my hand like that. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to let my trail hand get back to that gear tie. It may or may not happen because I bent it back a little bit more than I wanted to. So I got to take a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So now I take the club and I get it back like that. That's what I'm trying to do. So now I take the club back. This is where you're going to go down the line, Gibber. 
So we go like this, take it back. I want to bend that wrist over to there. And all of a sudden, you see how the club is now over on that side? The head, the head of the golf club is on the back side there. So now I'm going to go here, back, pause, stop, and then go. Okay, now, and what I would recommend is that you go onto the, onto the channel that you're on right now and, um, and, and watch that video because that video is going to help you a great deal. But I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So I'll record this. So I take it back there. Feel that position right there. Go ahead down the line there, Gibbsy, if you could. Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to go up like this, pause there, and then down. And then we go over to this here. And now what you can see is, and this is the fun part about this, this is going to feel so laid off. And yet when you look at this, it's just on plane. But it's going to feel like it's the club is way out of sight. Like it's nowhere near where you want it to be. And this is what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, maybe three, four weeks, because I want to get this club more on plane. So I'm doing this drill a lot. That's why I had this thing handy, and I knew exactly where it was, by the way. It's not like, hey, where are my car keys? Sweetheart, have you seen them? Uh, I don't, that's not the, this right here, I know exactly where this thing is, because that's what I'm working on for my golf swing, is getting that club in that position. And it's happening with that trail wrist. I want that trail wrist to bow back like that. So when you get there, now you got a chance now that club is now going to come down nicely. Look at this club come down. Lays down beautifully from the inside. Good, clean strike. That's what you got to do. So you get a gear tie. And what I can tell you is get the gear tie, watch the video, and you'll learn just how to make it, how to use it. I promise. This one is a keeper. All right. Okay, this one from Matt. I'm a good player, and I'm not struggling at all with irons. But my driver has been awful big slice or hook if i try to correct uh, can you help me with a swing thought for releasing the club through impact okay matt this stinks okay i'm gonna tell you this stinks uh, and i feel bad for you because you got your irons you're like man if i can get this in the fairway i'm gonna shoot nothing okay so this is the but here's the bad part about this right now I have to ask this, and I need Matt to get back to us. Did you get fit for your driver? Because what I find is when people are swinging all these clubs well, except for this one club, then one of a couple of things happened. One, they didn't get fit for the club. They were given the club. They bought the club because their friend had it. They hit it with their friend. They, they used it. It was great. And they bought what they thought was the same club. It looked like the same club, but the length of the club is off a little bit. The shaft's off a little bit. The setting's off a little bit, whatever. And all of a sudden, it's not the right one. And so that happens a lot, okay? And so what I need you to tell me, and I don't know whether he's gotten back to us yet, uh, Greg, or not, but I can't answer this question until you answer my question. And my question is, did you get fit for that? for that driver. Okay. What I typically see that happens with a lot of people is, is that, um, when this happens, they have a shaft that is, um, not the correct shaft. And as a result, it doesn't have enough, um, assist with the kick in the shaft and the spins are all off. And so you hit pulls and you hit slices. He got back to us. I did not get fit for my driver. There you go. It was so bad. I started using a shorter driver yep. uh, to try to get more control. Probably okay. a big mistake. Okay. So that's, so that's the problem. And that's what I like. That's what I kind of thought was going to happen. So what I would say to you, Matt, is this, and this is terrible. Like I want to help you very much. And so my hope is, is that you'll go, okay, you know what? That's my help. I got to go get fit for a driver. So you bring the driver and maybe even the other driver that you brought in, go see somebody, go to a club champion or go to a, uh, a Titleist fitter or wherever. Um, obviously preferably one of a partner of ours, but if not, no big deal. I just want to make sure that you get fit for that club. And what you're going to find out is, is that when you get fit for the club, it probably isn't you. It's probably the, the club itself. Okay. So what, in the meantime, what I would suggest is maybe just hit your, your three wood or go back to a club that you have. That was a driver that maybe you don't hit it as far, but you really hit it straight and just use that until you get fit for this, this other one. Okay. I appreciate you watching and, and asking that question. All right. All right. This is from Lee. 50% of the time, I hit a nice high draw off the tee, but the other 50% start straight with a big hook. Okay. 
So driver time. So half the time I hit it pretty good. Half the time I'm hitting pulls that, that, um, uh, start straight with a big hook. Yeah. So club face, basically club face is a, the only way this stinks, but this is the way it is. The, the, with the ball spinning hard to the hook side, the face is going to be a little bit closed. And when it's a little bit closed, what ends up happening is it's a pull based on where you're aligned or you're aimed or where your body is pointing or where you think you're uh, not where you think you're trying to hit it, but where you're actually aimed. So here's what I like to do. I like to get control over the face. Okay. You want to get control over the shot shape, this hook that you're hitting. You've got to get control over the face. And the way you get control over the face is you accelerate the rotation of the body and you decelerate the activity of the hands. So what I like to do is this. Set up. You can see the ball is pretty far forward here. I'm going to set up with this and I'm going to hit this like I was hitting those little pitch shots. I'm going to hit it with my chest and I'm not going to let it hook. Oh, it didn't work. Okay. So why didn't it hook? Well, I mean, why didn't it, it uh, fade? Well, when I took the club back, I took it back a little bit inside. And when I took it inside, the club face wasn't in an open, an, a more open position and it went to the left. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this club a little bit more outside. Now, you don't think about backswings being the cause of the problem, but they are. Just go down the line here, Gibbsy, if you would. Down the line. If I take the club inside like this, but my club face is going to get a little shut. Now my wrist gets into a poor position. My hands have some depth. And I think I'm doing one thing, but I'm not. So what I want to do is I want to feel like this club is going to go out here a little bit more. Now the toe of the club is going to work open. And now when the toe of the club works open, now I can take my body and rotate it. Now I can quiet down my hands. And now the club face, all of a sudden I'm going to hit a shot that's got a little bit of a cut to it. And so what it sounds like to me is you have an inconsistent backswing. And what I would, this is the question that I would ask. I'm sorry, I forgot the individual's name, uh, Greg. But uh, Lee. Lee. So this is what I would ask you to do, Lee. I want you to think about when you hit your hooks. Most times people will do this at the end of a round or when they get a little fatigued. Maybe you've teed off at, at 1030, you haven't eaten anything. You're coming into the, the last three holes on the, on the front nine, but you're right around lunchtime and you hit a couple of hooks and then you get something to eat and all of a sudden you feel a little better and you make, you make some better moves. Okay. It may be that your posture gets poor and you bend over a little bit too much, not because you're fatigued or whatever, uh, or hungry, but you just do, you bend over a little bit more. You lock your body down a little bit. The arms work back a little to the inside. The club face gets closed and you hit that hook. And so what I would tell you is, is that you got to watch your nutrition. That's an important part. You got to know when you hit your hooks. Is it random? Like half, it's not, it, it's more than likely not 50, 50, like literally every other time. It's probably you get into a streak and you do some good things. And then you get into a streak and you do some bad things. And is that streak happening at the start of the round? Maybe you're a little bit nervous. At the end of the round, maybe you're a little bit fatigued. Who knows? What you want to do is you want to notice the streaks. What I notice with, with players that struggle with this situation is it happens because of one of a couple of reasons. One, it happens at the end of the round, the last, say, five or six holes in the round, they get a little fatigued. They start uh, not moving the body properly. Two, um, they get a little nervous and they start bending over a little bit more and they lock the body down and the arms and hands move the inside and the club face does what it does and then they hit that hook. Three, when they get to where they're taking the club back, they think they're taking the club back in the right position. It's going a little inside. And though they're trying to rotate, they're not rotating. They get stuck. And so what I would tell you is whatever the causes of it, the absolute for me is that the club is working back too much to the inside. Club face is going to get a little bit shut. And when you come through, you think that you're doing what you want to do, but you're not. You're not rotating. You're using your arms and your hands. Your club face is, is now in a closed position and the thing is going to the left. So feel like you're standing a little taller. Feel like you've eaten a little bit better. Take the nervous energy out. Let the club go away and then rotate the body and you'll get rid of that hook. All right. All right. Let's answer one more question here, Gregory. Okay. From Jorge. Uh, does lifting your left heel to promote hip movement 
help or hurt your swing? This is a really, really interesting topic of conversation. And so the answer is, I don't know if it's going to help or hurt your swing because I haven't seen your swing. Obviously, it's, that's a terrible thing to say, but it's just the truth. Um, what I can tell you is this. There was many, many years ago, a popular idea that you should lift the, the left heel. And then Claude Harmon and Ben Hogan, if you really read into their stuff, what they will tell you is, and this started to happen sort of in the, the 50s and then into the 60s. And I think Claude wrote his article, and I want to say it was like 1964, 1963, when he said that the heel has to stay on the ground. Hogan actually, through his career, and there are some people that think, well, age had to do with it. And there are others that thought, no, 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 wisdom had to do with it. Um, but he actually went from lifting his heel a tremendous amount in the backswing to lifting his heel only with his driver. And it was a very small amount and everything else. He kept the heel on the ground. What, what Claude Harmon wrote about was the, the left heel coming up creates, um, inconsistencies in weight distribution and planning the heel. Now, long winded way of saying this, I don't know if it's going to help you or hurt you, but I am not, I'm not afraid of trying. So if you feel like you're going to be able to get a, a bigger turn out of the body by lifting the heel, if you want to do that, be my guest. I don't think you have to do that. I think you can narrow up your stance and get a, a really solid range of motion without lifting the heel. And so if, if, if you can, if you can narrow your stance and play well without lifting the heel, my advice is do it. Now, that doesn't mean that you should or shouldn't lift your heel. It just means my preference is not to lift the heel. Having said that, I've taught people to lift the heel. And I think there's there are real positives in, in getting the heel to go up into the air. It can, it can really help a lot, but it helps very, very few. And what also I see happen is, is that it doesn't help them hit it straighter. It does help them hit it farther, but it doesn't help them hit it straighter. Uh, so if you're trying to get straighter, I wouldn't lift your heel. If you're trying to get farther, I'd experiment with it. Okay. All right. I want to, uh, before I remind you of, of a few things, I want to remind you of, of the people that are, are taking care of the, the show for us. Uh, Mr. Steve Gibbs and, and obviously, uh, Greg Ducharme working a great job. Are they going to they, No, they just thumbs up. <laughs> they don't even know it. This is just good. We have I anarchy. Distracted. There's anarchy going on. And I also too want to remind you about our putter covers. We've got um, got mallet putter covers that have, they've got a magnet in them, which is, they're awesome. I'm telling you, I, I have been using these for a while. They're awesome. You never lose them. They sit right there. I mean, you literally, you got to, you got to chuck it to get it off the, off the head cover. I mean, off the, the club head. So we have it in the mallet, both lefty and righty. And then we also have this um, one for the for the blade putter, this right here. And again, it sticks right to the shaft. You're never going to lose these things. So if you're interested in getting the putter cover or the um, the poker chip ball marker, send an email to us at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com, and we'll uh, show you how to do all that. In the meantime, make sure you join us tomorrow on a new breed of golf on Sirius XM. We're going to talk a little instruction. We'll also talk a little bit about what's going on at the Zurich. And obviously, everybody wants to talk about what's going on with Tiger, slow play. That's a big popular topic of conversation. We've been talking about that all week, and we'll certainly, I'm sure, continue that conversation. But in the meantime, what I hope everybody has is a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. And if I don't, I hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you next week right here on A New Breed of Golf Live.